All right, so in the last couple examples, we saw gravity, we saw wind, um, and those things are really cool because they're forces that basically act on their own. They do stuff um, without our input. We can expand this idea uh, to think about autonomous behavior um, and really, in a way, like simple artificial intelligence. And now I know that sounds really um, sort of maybe scary because it's such a complicated field. And of course, for sure, if you go down the rabbit hole of that, there's so much math, so much really, really cool stuff happening. Um, but we can also build some really simple, simple, <laughs> believable systems um, just using the stuff that we've covered so far. Um, a key idea here is going to be vectors. So if you haven't watched the gravity video yet, you might want to do that so you can see kind of the basics of how that works. Um, but what I'd like to do here is program some basic um, chase and flee AI mechanics here. So we'll have our player and then um, we'll have a, um, a two little creatures that one of which chases us and one of which runs away from us. Um, so again, I've got myself set up here and um, let's create a player, a chase and a flea character. And these are all gonna be vectors. So I can make these here in my setup. Um, I'm actually gonna copy these and just paste them in. So we've got three vectors. The player is going to start at zero, zero. It's going to be controlled by the mouse. Um, the chase is going to be sort of off center as is the flea. Um, and maybe before we get any further, let's just draw these and make sure this works. So I'm going to say, uh, let's set the player equal to the mouse position. So player.x is going to be mouse x, player.y will be mouse y. And then we can draw it. Again, I'm just going to for the sake of time here, copy and paste this in for you. So I'm just drawing the player at this position um, and they're all gonna be 30 pixels, I think, yeah. Um, then we can also draw our chase creature and our flea creature. This way we can just kind of see and make sure it looks right. So let's run that and now we see Here's my character at my mouse. And you know what, let's make the background a little brighter or a lot brighter, much better. Okay, so now I've got my uh, character controlled by the mouse and then these other two creatures that one of which is gonna chase us and one's gonna run away. Um, then the next thing I wanna know how, how fast should they move? So I'm gonna say chase speed is gonna be equal to two and flea speed will be 0.5 like this. And that's actually all the variables we need to make this work. Oh, one other thing I think will be kind of nice just while I'm thinking about it. Um, you can see how my cursor covers up my player a little bit. Um, there is a really handy no cursor, oops, no cursor command, which we can call in setup. Um, actually you can call and draw too, but it wouldn't make as much sense. And now you can see basically I've just replaced my cursor with this circle, feels more intuitive. There's other cursors as well you can set. We might see some of those later. Okay, um, so our player stuff is actually done here. We're just changing its position. Um, but now the real work needs to happen. Um, so this first one will be our chase. This will be our flea. So we wanna be able to have this um, creature move towards us every frame. So it needs to know what direction um, it needs to move. And so we're gonna use some vector math for this. So the direction is going to be equal to um, the uh, player's position minus the chase position. So the little character here. And to do that, um, you know, in the gravity video we use dot add. So we change the speed based on the gravity. Um, but in this case, we wanna actually create a, a new value. We don't wanna change either the chase position or the player position yet. Um, and so we can do it like this, p5.vector.sub, sub, uh, subtract, player, and chase. And let's go ahead and just console.log this. And we can open up the console. And now we can see here, when I don't move, obviously that doesn't change. Um, it gives us a new vector that's the result of subtracting the other two. So we're not changing them. And that's what this whole p5.vector thing is, it's basically saying, make us a new vector that's the result of the subtraction here. So that looks good, um, but you'll, you know, these are based on screen coordinates. They're sort of relative to whatever size the screen is, or if my player is much further away, then this direction value is gonna be really big 
And that's not really what we want. We want these things to move at a fixed speed. Um, so then we can say direction.normalize. And what this is going to do is convert those screen coordinates into a range of 0 to 1. And so this is going to be something we're going to do really commonly for this kind of thing. Basically, it just um, it normalizes. It makes it um, so it's always kind of in the same range rather than be relative to the screen. And then uh, we can multiply it by the chase speed. So now our direction is going to always be in a range of 0 uh, or maybe negative 1. Hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, we're going to multiply it by the chase speed, which is going to mean that the direction now is going to be, um, instead of a range on the screen, instead of a range of 0 to 1, it's going to give us um, a range within the speed that we asked for. Now, we haven't actually changed its position yet. So then the last thing we want to do is add to the chase's position the direction. And this is it. I know it seems a little confusing. Um, but the it's magic. It's really cool. Now this thing is going to chase me around the screen, no matter which direction I'm facing, it's going to know in X and Y which direction to move, and it's going to move at a fixed speed that we set. Eventually it's going to find me and just sort of hang out. And if we change this chase speed to be something bigger or smaller, then it's going to move faster or slower. And that's the beauty here of using normalize and then multiplying it by the speed is it's always going to behave kind of the way we want. Now we can do the exact same thing for fleeing. It's really going to be easy. Um, but I think, let's see. Yeah. So actually let's start with something simple and then we're, we're going to add another, another feature that I think will be pretty fun. Um, so we've already declared a variable called direction. So we can't do it again here, but we can just use that same variable. So I'm going to say direction equals p5 dot vector dot sub. And in this case, it'll be player and flee instead of chase. We're going to normalize, convert it to range of 0 to 1, and then multiply it by the flee speed this time. And then flee dot. Um, now, in this case, instead of adding, which will move towards the player, we're going to subtract by the flea speed. Uh, is that right? No, nope, I screwed something up. Oh, sorry, not the flea speed. We want to subtract the direction. There we go. And now our little creature here is going to run away. We can let's make that move a little faster. So now it's going to flee from me while the black creature chases me which is pretty fun. Now, you'll notice right now, the flea little guy is just going across away off the screen because it just is going to keep going further and further from me. So let's add one more thing. Let's say maybe we only want it to flee when we're close enough. Um, and so the, in this case, then we would want to know the distance between those two points. And here's another place where vectors are awesome. We could do the Pythagorean theorem, but it's complicated and it's maybe not as efficient. Um, so instead, we can say create a variable called distance between, and we can say player dot dist or distance flee. This is going to give us a a single number, not a vector, um, that's the distance in pixels between those two points. And then we can say if the distance between is less than a certain threshold, then flee from us. And you'll notice I'm only doing this stuff in here, I want to draw it every frame. I'm just changing its position if it's um, close enough. And so now, if I'm over here, um, I'm being chased, but it's not running away. And then if I move closer, it's going to run away from me. And it's hard to describe you know, with you watching uh, rather than playing with this. So I re really recommend running this in your browser. Um, how absolutely satisfying this is. You feel like you're interacting with creatures. This feels really real with just a little bit of vector math. Um, it's really fun. Now, of course, this is like the most rudimentary AI we can think of. There are so many behaviors that we might think to add here. Um, and I'm going to share with you some resources for ways to start thinking about this. Um, the first is Breitenberg vehicles. Um, this is an idea that was uh, that came up with by this um, um, cyberneticist named Valentino Breitenberg um, in the 20th century. Really cool. These uh, sort of like vehicles that have sensors that are wired in different ways, and they either are attracted to light or repulsed by light. And you can actually create these really um, amazing complex behaviors 
It's really awesome, and um, you can read a lot more about that. I'll also include links to some uh, steering behavior AI stuff. This is really great. This is from Gabe Development um, on Tutorials Plus. This is great. There's tons of examples here uh, from Gama Sutra as well. This is um, steering behaviors in games as well. And then uh, Daniel Schiffman's Nature of Code is like, oh, it's so good. It's the most amazing resource for this stuff. And he has a chapter on autonomous agents, um, talks about Breitenberg vehicles and a lot of other stuff. And there's just a ton more information here. So if you're interested, um, it's much, it gets much deeper into the physics and stuff like that. So if you're into that, this is also a great resource. Um, but in the next video, we'll also look at some other basic kind of AI that we can create that kind of expands on this idea. Um, but I think a great place to start is just experimenting, creating more of these. You could also imagine creating a class where um, they either are chasers or fleers. You could have thousands of these things on the screen. Lots of really cool stuff you could think about here.